All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I built a really simple set of stairs, like the most basic front steps on a porch you can imagine. And I started out by getting rid of the old, the old beast that was in there, uh, this concrete set of stairs. It actually ended up being concrete and brick, kind of like an amalgam of the two. And at first I thought I'd be able to haul it out of there, just pull it out, but man, it wouldn't really move. So I ended up busting it up into pieces dragging it on my trailer uh, you know you probably won't have a situation like this if you're building a set of stairs but whatever you do you got to clear the site right so you got to take out the old steps maybe they're wood maybe they're concrete or brick or whatever get rid of them give them away uh, fortunately in my town there's concrete recycling so i was able to recycle a bunch of this all right now it's time to get busy uh, measuring out the area and i'm going to build the stair on and this is the thing that sometimes trips people up uh, but it's pretty straight up uh, basically, you got to calculate your rise. So I'm going to say that uh, from this point here to this point here, the top of the nosing is my rise. And that is about 23 inches. Over here it is closer to, closer to like 21 inches on that side. So you just subtract the first step when you calculate your step heights. And step height's usually like seven or eight inches. So that's pretty straight up. It's 23 inches to the top. Minus seven gets me down to 16. And then 16 divided by two, those are eight inch risings, uh, risers. So it's pretty straight up. This is gonna be two steps. There's gonna be one step, two steps, second one right here. Then you're gonna step up. Uh, the other thing to think about is where you're gonna secure your second step. I've got a thin board here, but there is a framing member back behind. So I could hang stair stringers here, or I could just build boxes. And then the other consideration are the uh, banisters, or the newel posts. And I'm going to put a newel post here, and a newel post over there. That way it'll have two railings next to the staircase. So I got a nice post right here. So I'm going to put my first one right here, I'll kind of tie in with the sidewalk. And I'll put the second one right over here, and then I'll tie in with this post. That way I'll have a railing coming off of each post and it'll actually be a little more secure. They'll have a connection up at the top and a connection at the bottom. All right, so with things calculated, I knew where to dig my holes. Now, uh, I dug holes for my posts, and I'm sinking the posts in the ground in concrete, and that's not the way everyone does this. Another way to do it is to attach your post to a concrete pier or sill. And I just find that if you attach a post, even if you use big brackets and concrete screws, it doesn't end up being quite as solid as if you sink them in the ground in concrete. So I decided with my big six by six posts, just to bury them and sink them with concrete, that makes these posts unmovable. It's amazing how much leverage you can put on a newel post when you're swinging around a staircase and running up a staircase. So anyway, that's the way I did it. It's also worth taking some time to level them, plumb them, make sure they're aligned and the same height with one another. Uh, you might have seen that in a second ago. To match the height, I just put a flat two by four across the top of one that was at the desired height, and then I was able to mark the other one at the same height. So those are my newel posts, and that's kind of like the centerpiece of the staircase. But uh, the next thing I needed was a concrete sill down below to run my uh, stringers onto. You know, kind of like a real solid foundation. And I made some reference marks on the newel posts that relate back to the deck itself. So the, the porch has a height, you know, the top of the nosing or nosing, and then the ground has a level. And between those two, you want to make sure you're really level and specific. One side of your sill isn't higher than the other, one side isn't lower, etc. So anyway, it took a little bit of time to uh, make a basic frame. I use pressure treated stuff here just because what I had on hand. You can frame up with regular two by fours because uh, in almost all cases, you're gonna be pulling that wood framing away once your concrete is poured. The rock aids in drainage and then you're ready to pour your concrete. This is a pretty basic sill, just big enough for the stair stringers. You can pour a bigger one. You could actually bring your, string, your, your stairs down onto a patio or a concrete porch or whatever you have. But in this case, I was dealing with soft ground, so I needed to pour concrete. Uh, one thing to note is that this concrete on top, I didn't finish it perfectly level because if you do that, you'll end up with water pooling. Instead, it just has the, the slightest arch on the top 
of the concrete and that way the water sheds away. All right, next up was to uh, get my stringers ready. I just bought some prefab stringers. I'm not embarrassed to say I didn't make my own stringers. Uh, there are plenty of videos on YouTube. Wait, wait for it, check this out. <laughs> there are plenty of videos on YouTube about making your own stringers and it's not a hard process. But uh, just to save some time, I went ahead and bought a couple short stringers. They're like 10 bucks each. I cut them down because like I mentioned before, these are just two steps, They're like really small staircase. I set up my four stringers. Uh, if you use fewer stringers, you know, on a porch this wide, you're gonna end up with some bounce and I wanted these to be rock solid steps. You'll note that I also have a ledger board. That's that pressure treated two by four. And the ledger board is, is important. I use those whenever I put up stairs to set the stringers on. It's just, I think it's a really cool method. It means that you can notch your stringers and they're connected to the ledger board not only by your fasteners, but just through a joint, like a simple piece of joinery. Uh, these screws are really kind of superficial just to hold them in place. But this part's important. You got a two by four across the top between the two external stringers, and that two by four marks exactly where the other ones are gonna go. Just because you don't want any variation in level between all these stringers. You know, you want them to all be totally lined up and match so that your stairs are just perfectly flat. All right, so with the stringers in place, with those uh, screws on top, they're kind of flexible. I was able to plumb them and true them, get them all set, and then my brackets go on. Uh, you know, these are just typical metal brackets, and they will hold your stringer in place on top. Now, the stringers are also attached to the concrete down below. That avoids uplift, so for some reason someone came along and decided to like power lift these stairs, they couldn't lift them up. Or if there was like a strong wind or something. So uh, what I did is I just took some brackets, bent them at a right angle and attached them to the concrete with concrete screws. You could bury your brackets in the concrete and actually I had planned to do that and I just kind of forgot. Uh, but if you bury your brackets, great. If you screw them into the concrete, that's just as good. I've got four brackets on there and the stairs are now attached to the concrete and to the porch. And after that, I just filled in around the concrete, kind of prepped the area a little bit. And you know what? It's like seven minutes into this video and we've almost got some stairs. I used pressure treated one inch thick decking for the stairs and I think that works out really well. I like the look of it, it's solid. Some people use two by stuff, you know, like two by eights, two by twelves. And laying down decking, the only real trick is just to make sure that if there's a cup to the wood, like the grain, you want that cup on the, on the downward side. That way your wood doesn't curve someday and create puddles, like, you know, pools of water on your steps. It doesn't always cut, but, you know, sometimes it does. All right, so anyway, I got the stairs in place, four pieces of wood, pretty simple, like I was saying, and I pre-drilled all these things. It is tempting with new wet lumber to just put your screws right through it. And you often won't even see cracks, but I found that after a couple years when it dries out, sometimes splitting and cracks will form. So it just takes a minute to pre-drill and it's totally worth it. All right, next up is making the railing. Uh, there's a railing on each side of the step and I just use a simple two by four, again, pressure treated. And I put a little uh, bevel on the top or a chamfer or whatever you call it. That's because I wanted it to match the existing railing. So you got the green railing on the left and I wanted to, you know, tie this in and make it look pretty much the same. It's not identical, but it's close. So I attached the railing to my posts, the newel posts on one side and the posts on the porch on the other. And there's a good connection I was talking about. And then I notched out the bottom piece. This is the bottom piece of the railing. And I did it this way because that's the way the person had done it who built the rest of the porch railing. And I just wanted it to match. It's kind of cool. I notched it out so that the uh, vertical pieces of the railing can fit in that notch and then you'll see that I also had to fabricate some little spacers to kind of fill the void to keep water out. You'll see that in a second. Now to uh, fabricate the railing I just took a 2 by 8 and ripped it down to one and a half by one and a half inch pieces 
and you can buy that stuff at the hardware store but I just find it's cheaper and sometimes more solid if you fabricate it yourself. The gaps on this porch were four and a half inches. Now uh, the building code calls for four inches and I could have gone with four inches, but instead I went with a match. I did four and a half to make it look just like the rest of the porch. The deal with this porch is that it's not even two feet tall. So uh, by code, you don't even need a railing on this porch. Also, the height of the railing was a little bit non-standard. It was like 32 inches instead of 36. So I just matched it to the existing railing. This is an old house. This is like a 19th century house. And uh, just to keep it authentic to the original design and the existing porch and everything, I matched everything. And then here you can see those spacers. These fill the gaps that I created on that bottom piece. And after some sealant, just totally keep the water out. You want the water to shed off this baby. Um, even with pressure treated wood, you know, you don't want water getting anywhere really in your wood because over time you'll end up with bugs and rot and whatnot. All right, so with everything sanded up, there were just a few more touches. Uh, the newel posts, you could leave them as is, but I wanted to put a cap on them. It's kind of traditional on a newel post to have a cap. And I just fabricated these uh, using the table saw. And again, with like a 30 degree bevel, put that uh, bevel or chamfer along the top just to kind of give it a little relief on the edge. And then just screwed them down. The screw heads on top got some sealant that they don't, uh, you can't see them, and they also don't attract water. All right, just one more touch. Uh, this just closed up the front, and a little trick you can see here is to raise this baby up so that it's off the step boards. You just, again, don't want water touching. It would allow for some drainage to have that little gap. It's about a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch. Now, in this case, I had to do some kind of refabrication of the patio stones down below. And that's the landing. I also leveled it out so that, uh, you know, when you're coming down the stairs, you have a good footing. And, you know, you probably got a different situation. Some people have gravel at the bottom of their stairs, others concrete, etc. Here I just use concrete pavers. I got a little out of sequence because I didn't have enough pavers and I started uh, laying some primer on the wood. Uh, if you're going to be painting pressure treated wood, you've got to prime it, man. That stuff will just soak up the paint and show through if you don't prime it. And I was painting these uh, railings and the newel post again, just because, you know, I wanted it to match the rest of the porch and the same colors and everything. All right, I finally got the uh, second piece of wood installed. And after that, I uh, cut down some pavers just to make it all kind of fit together. And this is all set in sand. You know, if you're laying pavers down, you got to do it in sand just so that they kind of level up and flatten down and don't get warpy. I also worked some sand into the cracks. And later I did that with a broom just to make sure all the gaps were filled. All right, so that is pretty much a wrap on the staircase. Uh, the one thing I won't show you is that I also sealed the stairs themselves, you know, like the stair treads. And other than that, it's just a coat of paint to match the existing staircase. And this thing's done. Hit me up with a comment down below if you have questions or thoughts or concerns or whatever. Uh, I've got another video about building porch railings, just exclusively railings. It is just so cool to be able to rebuild a, a set of stairs. It's like really empowering. And I, I'm just amazed by how many houses need this job. You know, how many houses need a new set of stairs and how it makes the whole experience of entering the house just that much better. Anyway, uh, thanks for checking out the video. I appreciate it. Comment, subscribe, share, all that stuff, and I will see you in the next project.